Greetings and salutations. This is Ray Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Madeline Screwer Guy. Today we're going to take a first look at Endless OS. I've never been to this system before. I've heard a lot about it, but I haven't heard enough about it. So here it's it for myself. First thing we're going to do is look at the website. And you should now see my Endless OS website here. Technology that riches life it says uh, it says more than just the OS kind of like system 76 has it sells computers and has their own system use and it's sort of the same way so if you look at the here it's a free download the easy options windows installer if you have a pair of windows if you're like me most of all my computer are Linux and here are advanced download options ISO downloads, probably what most people are going to want to get. We have VM downloads, here we download Swarm downloads. There. Like Raspberry Pi 4, all those kind of single board computers. So, anyway, we're going to download ISO. And now they have your basic, basic one. That's it's all by itself, it's 3.3 gigabytes ISO. But then it requires you have access to the internet in order to work. Now this is down here you can get the NSS OS for English full. And you don't have internet access, you can download this one. You know English, you can use this one. The one you can get for most of your stuff. But you can use BitTorrent if you know how to do that and down HTTP download if you have that. So that's what I did was I downloaded this basic right here, 3.0, gigabyte one rather than the 17 gigabyte gigabyte that I'll take too long to download that. And they do have down here they have French full. If you know Fran French and you you want your you know, you use the internet and you download that one. The uh, only time you need to use the internet is to download these things, obviously. So, and you got Portuguese, Brazilian, full. You got Spanish, full. That's all the uh, languages that have it in full ones. Otherwise, if you don't have one of those languages, you get this multi language system that will pay for basic tools and for utilities. Recommended by for computers that will have access to the internet. That's why I downloaded because that's your standard ISO for most computers is 3.3 gigabytes. But if you want to take tag time download, you gotta get internet access. You can do download one of these 17 gigabyte ISOs. Or go borrow somebody's computer that has good internet access to download it. You can put it on the device on your you have to have a good size USB, you can you know, four game sticks on these, you gotta have 17, probably something like a 32 gigabyte, at least minimum, to download these full versions. So you not only have to know the English language, or Spanish, or French, or, or Brazilian, Portuguese, or, or any of those languages, you have to also have a good enough like, USB stick that you can download 17 gigabytes onto it. Then you gotta run the puppy <laughs> after that. So anyway, I downloaded this one. Probably what most people end up downloading. And we'll go from there and see what we got. Alrighty. I actually see my Debian 12 install I did a while back. If you haven't seen that, go back into the thing and look at it. It's a pretty popular video. Yeah, I basically took Debian Bullseye and I changed it into Debian Bookworm, which is 12. Took Debian 11, changed it to Debian 12. Problems I had with it and how I fixed it and how I got through it. If you want to look at it, look, I'll put a link down in the description for you when I get this done. And so, but anyway, we're going to install Endless on this OS and probably wipe out this Debian 12 and also have. And then so Arco Linux on here, not Arco, but Arch Linux. Arch Linux OS, I think is what it's called. We're going to install Linux on here and see what we got. We're going to reboot this. And 
Amen. This is my little script I've used to do uh, reboot and log out and all that kind of stuff. And it's not so easy on the. It's helpful if you have GNOME on it. So, whoops, I forgot to uh, pay attention to uh, and reboot the computer again. There you go. Okay, so here we are booted into the live USB and it's ready to install. Um, hit next on that. So we either can run it from the USB stick and try it out for a while. Or you can reformat the computer and know it's installed in the OS on there. So we're going to say reformat. And in this OS basic 3.5 gigabytes. Well, we probably need to start set up our internet connection over here. Connect to that. And we have internet access, yay. So we got in this OS basic five. So let's this you like to reform everything this OS. That would be this one here, SSD. Yeah. Okay, so what it's telling you here is that you agree erasing all your own files and apps. They're on the disk. And it looks like you have some multiple conditions on this disk, for example. Reformatting within this OS will erase all partitions on the selected disk. Please click here to confirm. In other words, what they don't tell you here, or what I haven't seen anywhere, is that I think this is a mutable system. But it doesn't mention anywhere. In mutable systems, you pretty much have to have everything, just one, one system on your drive. And install it alongside of another system. So you have to click here to read erasing all your files and apps. Which I hate to do since I have Hopefully they may have had a box where I select partition and install on there, but apparently not. So let me test that. We're going to check it out. Yeah, it's reformatting the disk apparently. So now we just have to wait. Now we'll come back when we're on the other side of this, this part of it. Reformatting basically included all the installations of stuff system and all that kind of thing okay so power computer and then remove your usb device let me start doing the instead of rebooting you want to power off and power back on it's a simpler way of doing the removal endless And the same background we had on the live. Now we're back to this. Now it's kind of curious about all the different uh, languages you have options for in the spacing. So we'll say stick with our English. I know I know how to speak that usually. And so typing, keyboard layout. Yeah, that's all the stuff you set up now. Normally we get set up from the things in English. Yep. Okay, automatically save and send new statistics and problem reports to endless. All data is anonymous. Sure I'll do that. 
Wi-Fi. Okay, it says it's connected. Okay. All right, that'll work for me. And connect your online account. I'm not worry about that now. Maybe affect them as I go anyway. We'll skip that. About me, my full name. So I'm gonna use my username Rick, so that's good. And set a password. Set a password. You definitely wanna do. Have set parental controls for you. Parental controls for this user if you wanna set that up too. They passed for Rick Koppel. So he's in SOS, all done. Okay, so to see what's not unless I'll take turtle. Sure, we'll take a tour real quick. Okay, on our website, learn more about the SOS on our website. You already looked at that. Get an overview, press super key to see to open windows and apps. So, is that? I think it's a GNOME desktop, pretty much what they have here. Looks like GNOME to me. Up, down, to overview, touchpad. It's this computer doesn't have a touchpad, so that's pointless for me. That's it, have a nice day. Get more advice and tips. See the help app. Okay, so you've seen this is typical GNOME thing. What they got here? Hack. Obviously, uh, the app for hacking. Endless hack. Unlock infinite possibilities for coding. Hack is a new learning platform for this. Focus on teaching the hand. Not application updated. They've already updated some apps automatically, huh? Hack has a variety of activities that teach a wide range of skills and concepts. Check it out. We'll do that at some point, but not right away. Shot well, I'm familiar with that. Videos, no videos, probably. System must be your uh, settings. I try. Yeah, work here. Basically, we're office. Utilities. Settings. There's your settings. What's the other thing was it? And uh, change, screenshot, document scanner, and there's more over here. And your terminal, system monitor, logs, printer control, edition, disk, evolution, contacts, font. And you have calculator, you have your G edit, and archive manager. Yeah, it's got pretty much most of the stuff you want in there. I'm not sure what this is. Find out what it is here.
Fish, 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 sounds. Uh, first thing you should do is import some resources from channels tab. Uh, I don't know what it is exactly. No channels installed. Yeah, I'll look at that later. I figure out what it is for. So, down here you got App Center, Permium, Files, and your show application. The system is. Current clock and schedule. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So it's a learning tool, basically. Yes, that's that. I don't know how much help that is, but I mean, for some people, sidetrack. Here game. Similar there. That's a game. <laughs> Interesting. Hey, let's look there real quick. Okay. Um, a TN and that's first of me to have. Okay. Oh, that's interesting, I guess. There it goes. Bye bye, hack. Yeah, it'd be hard for me to use that for much of anything. It's pretty main to learn. Now, what I'm curious about though is where the encyclopedia is at. And I have it in the basic version though. And it says, read download the free encyclopedia when you contribute to. Yeah, so it seems like this would be good for somebody who's not real familiar with the. With coding or or systems and files and stuff like that, he's had some learning on that on here, and I think it's also an immutable file system, so it's hard for people to screw up their system accidentally as well. You we can test that out though. I don't install this right now because it's like sounds like it's gonna be a big thing to download and so all that kind of stuff. It's free. You can download it when you want to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to check on get terminal up to see if. Nope, that doesn't bring up a terminal. Terminal. That doesn't bring up anything. And that doesn't bring up anything. So you get a terminal. Lay your mouse until you put some. Key bindings in here. I assume you can put key bindings in here. Probably in settings. 
And of course, put its own thing on there. Okay, let's check it out. Wonder how you sense to modify. References. Profile. Yes. Same thing. Just some font. Lay. Colors. Yeah, we are this. Nice and right. There's a nice on there. It's using about a gig of data, which is about standard for GNOME desktops. Got about eight gigs I have on here and uh not use any swap and just mineral CPU usage. Then I need a patch on it. See now this is basically no I'm not sure what package manager has on it. I okay, said so we were saying, so we'll try it and see what happens. Yes, it's got an app. The owner has Nala. No, no. Let's try apps. It's obviously a, uh, based on Debian or Ubuntu, one of those things. So, we'll see. Uh... Let's see, sudo, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so you can just use, it's able to locate packet dollar, but it's not using locking for read only lock files. It says lock print in. So yeah, so it's obviously a, a, a mutable system. You can just install things on it willy-nilly like that. I have to learn how to do that on this particular system. <clears throat> I'm sure if they have a way to do it. I'm not sure what it is, since they didn't even mention that it was a mutable system to begin with. We can go here, we can go CD, uh, user, and then LS. Let's go, uh, yeah, let's go to share application. So, you know, our desktop, I was trying to edit one of these, see if we can do it. Mm -hmm. I wonder why that's showing the bottom of the screen. There we are. Sudo. Okay, nano. I assume nano's on here. 
Space tab. Desktop. Unravel. Even though I use sudo, it's unravel, which indicates it is a mutable file system. The only place you should be able to edit files is in the etc etc directory or the root directory. So. Yeah, so sudo. And if you want to change your uh, your host name, for instance, I would tend to do sudo. Uh, no, no, sudo. And no. Uh, and uh post name right now host name is endless let's change that to my Dello okay Let me sudo here now. Post. Hello. That's done there. So now if we do that of this kind of fucking way it works. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Yeah, retain everything, but that. that's pretty good. Now it says in the so you gotta reboot, you can just. You know, click, 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 click. Takes four clicks to, to exit out of this. Okay, so this is modified GNOME desktop and it shows applications automatically you know, on the first boot up with not normal for GNOME. But I sort of like that since that's usually how I think of things and work on applications. And of course, there's a minimal amount of applications on this particular one. It'd be interesting if I had the time to download the, one of the big ones and see what we're going to install that on here. That seems to be in this OS. It's immutable. I don't know how you get into it. I haven't learned that kind of thing. I don't know if it has special apps. Now, obviously, if it's immutable, then basically way you install things on here is use the uh, the software center, obviously, right down here. Or app center, they call it not software. And then you... The most of these are going to be flat packs, I think, is what they're going to have on here. You can put all your stuff, you can put G GIMP on there, you can install transmission if you need to deal with the BitTorrent, Teller and Desktop. Okay, let's see if uh, uh FlatHub, yep, yeah, see FlatHub. That's probably about the only thing we can get in flat packs. At least it looks like it's installed before right you're out of the box. And initialize, so you don't have to do anything special. 
That's good news. Here's the stall easy enough. And stack it somewhere, I'm not sure where. And where might have to reboot in order to uh, see it on the system. And utility. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna go settings, we go to those. Standard Wi Fi, network, Bluetooth, background. What kind of backgrounds they have on here? Standard, pretty much no backgrounds. Looks like some pretty nice backgrounds out here in the world. Like sunrises or sunsets, that's him in there. Here's what we're using. Nothing. Some of these are familiar, some are not. Zebras. Let's see that for now. Oh yeah, let's check out what version of Noble wants if she's wailing or not. I think you should be able to find out by going settings. Right here at the bottom. And it says Dello there now. It's another place to change it, but I don't want to change it. Can't see if I... Yeah, if it's using Wayland. Version 1.41.3 is no version. Sort of modern, but a little behind the times. And it's so it's 5.02. This is yet there. Hmm. Huh. Anything else you want to look at on here? All right, yeah, it's in this OS. First looking in this OS. Yeah, it's not too bad. It looks all right. Or, you know, except for having a GNOME desktop, which I'm not all that crazy about, but it's all right. I can work with it if I have to. And 
Seem like I had some interesting programs to explore on the side tr uh, system in the hack. Oh, the hack's a little difficult to get out of here to go right click on there. Also, it doesn't have very many key bindings in it, it doesn't appear. Terminal. That's standard for GNOME though. It doesn't usually put the terminal key binding in there for some weird reason. Maybe you use Control Alt T on it. So add that in if you want it. You can set up the key bindings however you like though, I'm pretty sure. So that's the thing you have to do in this. Unlike Archcraft, which had them all preset exactly the way I liked them, so that was cool. But I have it on my Acer laptop, Archcraft. But yeah, so it's interesting, it's a little bit different, but it's good activities. But yeah, it's got some differences. I think it's using. Plank or what down here? Let's first look at it in this OS. Just kind of get an idea what it's about. It's a nice system overall. I guess I can use it if I had to. I don't really want to, but I, if I had to, I can use it. And what I think it's probably ideal for is brand new computer users. Got some teaching things in there that would be helpful for somebody learning how to use a computer, that kind of thing. It's also immutable so they can destroy it very easy. Use the sauce on your system and use it. Now if you really want to run as a research person, Encyclopedia can be a good resource for you. And if you get the and also if you don't have internet access or you don't have very good internet access or you have expensive internet access internet access. You know, so you apply to use this is probably a good option for you since it's designed to work in those kind of spotty, not so good conditions. So, not too bad. For those kind of uh, people, that would be an option they would need to have. So, if you enjoy this video, subscribe and Click the bell if you want me to notify by email when any new videos put out. And otherwise, have a great day. And remember, may the Linux Force be with you. Bye.